Hey, what's up guys? This is Jam1, part of the mess of the workbench. Today we're going to be replacing the tone arm of the Newmark PT-01 scratch turntable with a third-party tone arm. This is going to be a quick and dirty demonstration, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Here's the third-party tone arm I just mentioned a second ago that we're going to be installing today. Don't mind the gunk and goo all over it. I spilled some of the glue on the workbench and it got on here, but a little bit of goo off and I'll get that off soon enough. Let's take a closer look. Again, apologies for all the smudges I got on there. I accidentally laid this down on a surface that had a bunch of glue on it from uh, a spill I had earlier. That is definitely not reflect the quality of the product. This was in pristine condition when I got it. Trust me on that. Feels real sexy. Has a solid metal counterweight on there. It comes in multiple pieces. The counterweight was already attached. Then had this long bracket tone arm and then sides and a small U-shaped metal bracket that I had glued together. I had to put them together. Uh, we got some double-sided tape here to hold the wires once it's installed. Uh, a word of caution, the holes on these side tabs are slightly different. One of them is slightly larger and I'll explain that later. It has to do with the original tone arm. Um, the one with the larger hole, if you're looking at the tone arm straight on, you're going to want it on the left hand side, so remember that. Again, uh, the smudges are from a spill I had. Once I get some uh, goo gone or something like that, I'm sure it'll clean it right up and look brand new again. Alright guys, a heads up. Uh, to use these third party tone arms, uh, you're definitely going to need to do a preamp modification to these turntables because once you start using needles like the Shure M447 or any Concord or typical turntablist friendly uh, cartridges and styluses the uh, output isn't too loud so you're going to want to install a preamp you can get one uh, through beatshelter.com uh, Flesh One put out his own custom one that is really nice um, I went with the older method that he had once uh, had up on his website using a pile uh, phono preamp that was gutted and uh, installed in here. It was a bit of a pain in the butt, but I got it going. I had already gone through and done this just so I had made sure everything works before I go ahead and make this tutorial and look like an idiot if it didn't work. So uh, once I dismantle things, it might look a little weird, but I'll explain as I go along. <laughs> You're going to want to use a nice, thin, very thin screwdriver. And right here on the side, there's a little crossbar that goes across here to act as a pivot for the original tone arm. You're going to want to go on the outside and push it through out this way. This is the side that's a little larger, so it can't go this way. That's why I mentioned in the tone arm earlier, the bigger hole. You're going to need it so that larger end fits in there. So you got to come around on the edge. It's going to take a little bit of pressure, but you got to push it through. And eventually this pin is going to come out. This is the larger end right here. You can see it has like a little star shape. Put that aside, don't lose it. You got to remove the tone arm, and this is what I said. I had done it before. There's a little spring that attaches right here. You're going to undo that spring. Don't even worry about that spring. And this is the original tone arm cable that sits in this little U-channel right here that goes up into the original stylus. You're going to want to disconnect it and pull it out of this U-channel. It's only held on by a little bit of tape, so don't worry. Get rid of this old tone arm. All right, guys, right now you're looking at the back of the Shure M447 cartridge. I got hooked up on the alligator clamp so I can get it nice and still so you can see. This is the original wire that was coming from the Newmark portable. Immediately, I noticed that it was a red and white wire as well as a black wire that had two little couplings attached to that single black wire. So I was a little confused at first, but through some trial and error, I got everything running uh, fine. I have the white wire running into the white, the red running into the red, and then upon close inspection I noticed that this was 
left ground and right ground so that black coupler right there fit into both of those perfectly. Uh, these connections were a little loose at first, so carefully use a set of pliers to squeeze them so they're a little tighter on that connection and you should be fine. I figured I'd just connect this ahead of time to spare some of the headache of working around the tone arm once it's installed. Uh, as you can see, I took the stylus out just so I wouldn't bang that around. So definitely recommend doing this ahead of time. Here's another view from the side of those same connections. Again, we got white, red, and then both blacks on those bottom terminals. All right, guys, we got our tone arm in place. Remember, you're going to want the larger hole side of the little crossbar on the left hand side. It's going to be tricky because you got to get it through the tone arm first, then you got to get it through this hole, then that hole, then the other side of the tone arm. So bear with me while I gimmick through this. Make sure you bring your, your crossbar underneath this wire. That way the wire holds it up and guides it along the tone arm a little cleaner than if it were on that side pushing it down. So we'll start with the tone arm slightly and maneuver it through. This is free spinning so it might be a little difficult for me to do this right now. Tone arm first, just slightly and then maneuver it through. I got it through one. Make sure you loop the wire over as you can see right there and now we got to maneuver it through the other side of that metal bracket first it's a little tricky Got it through there. Now get it through the other side of the tone arm itself. All right. Once it's pushed through, use your nice thin screwdriver and push this side nice and flush. There you go. Here's another angle at that. Remember, like I said, you see that crossbar. You want the wire over the crossbar so it kind of guides it along the tone arm up here. All right, guys, moment of truth. Time to install the head shell onto the tone arm. You're gonna wanna run your screw from the bottom side through the tone arm up top. Pardon me, little nuts, big hands. Just gonna give it a quick little twist not even gonna tighten too hard because I'm not even gonna tighten too hard because I'm gonna want to adjust the head shell in a few go ahead and add the second one on the back side Adjust your head shell accordingly, however you like it, forward and back. I like it flush with the edge. And go ahead and tighten from the underside. This is nice and tight. There we go. Just add in your stylus and you're good to go. Give it a test. 
test. All right, I haven't connected the uh, toner and wire yet, just because I'm a little lazy at the moment. I just want to give you a little test already. <laughs> I'm a little heavy handed, oh I should say I'm very heavy handed on the scratching so I have my original counterweights from my head shell and I probably get a throw up on there. Those screws are a little short for the original head shell screws so I might order some longer ones. Uh, I know somebody mentioned online what type of screws they were, some sort of uh, machine M5s or M3s or something like that. Might be something to look into, I believe uh, 15 millimeters long, I think you could get them as long as 17 or 19. Uh, worst case scenario, I could probably just glue it underneath to add some extra weight. Again, that's not for everybody. I'm, uh, I've got some pretty big hands, so I'm really, I'm really heavy-handed on the scratching. Uh, but the weight and everything on there is really nice. Uh, let's take a closer look. <laughs> Again, you can grab this tone armor online. It's a great build quality, super solid, really easy to install. Definitely love supporting the uh, community. Definitely give it a try. It looks sexy, looks nice, it's beautiful. I almost forgot, guys, there's also a tone arm clip has some adhesive backing that you install directly on top of the original one like that. So let me go ahead and do that behind the scenes. All right, what you're gonna wanna do is, before you actually place it down, push it up against the tone arm so it's sitting in there and move it back and forth to align it with the original clip and just bring the whole thing down together all as one so that adhesive could sit. that little channel for the wire too so you don't even got to worry about the wire this ain't going nowhere all right guys again I am heavy-handed on the cut I added this original head shell weight on there and once I get some longer screws for the head shell I'll be able to put that on the underside so it's not being seen. Anybody who's normal uh, pressure on the record shouldn't have any issues but again I have some fairly large hands so I have a lot of pressure on there I just can't help it so I need that extra weight personally. Uh, let's give it a test. definitely the whole table moving so don't even get that confused too much that shell does move a little bit but again those are some ridiculous scribbles it's expected but it's staying in the groove that's what matters most sounds a lot better beautiful again make sure you check out the link below grab yourself a copy support the scene it's a beautiful thing, beautiful tone arm, looks sexy as hell, feels nice, just beautiful, beautiful. Peace.